um, Strength and Communities Fund. Um, Yanni, would you like to introduce us as the chair of the working group? Okay. Right. Uh, just just to um, acknowledge uh, our staff for the work that they've done on this 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 year. Actually, um, staff have picked up on something that I think is really helpful uh, in terms of how we did the assessment and the workshop yeah. or the discussions at the workshop, and that and that was that each of the matrices now have a very clear staff recommendation because. So I hope that that format has made it easier for people to follow the rationale behind the amount, the quantum that staff are recommending to fund or otherwise. Um, and the other thing is that we've allocated them across sectors and groups of sectors. So I think that makes it a lot easier to compare against similar types of uh, activities in terms of the funding. So um, I just want to acknowledge the work that the staff have done uh, in that regard. Uh, I think the reality is that um, Obviously, we have a huge amount of uncertainty with with COVID nineteen in our in our society at the moment, um, and a lot of these applications were done uh, before the current lockdown. Uh, so I think we'll just have to have a degree of understanding. But uh, I think the recommendations from the workshop um, there's a few that have changed from the staff recommendations. There's been a robust process around discussing it, uh, and uh, I'm happy to um, put forward this report um, to to move it and to, uh, uh, yeah, put it on the table for, for discussion. Thank you. Thanks, Yanni. Do I have a seconder? Tim, that's great. Thank you very much. Right, do we have any um, uh, questions of staff? Tim. Um, thank you. Um, just to, to clarify, any, if, um, in, if someone is putting forward um, an increase to anything, that money would be taken. Would sorry, study again. The money that's left over, and this will do, go across to the D discretionary response fund. Is that correct? That's correct. So the workshop on the 30th of July from the yes. funding subcommittee recommended allocating 135,000 to the DRF. Additional yes. to that, there's still another 5,000 that could be allocated and still allow for that recommendation to be completed. If um, the committee choose to increase by more than 5,000, then that would come off that 135 that's going to the discretionary response fund. And as mentioned before by Councillor Hanson, we are in very uncertain times with regards to our second lockdown. So there may be organisations who will be um, having to recalculate what they're doing once we know we, we where the end of this is, and um, so that dis there could be further pressures or increased pressures on that discretionary response fund. Would that be a fair statement? That's correct. Thank you. Right. Any further questions, Jimmy, and then Andrew? Thank you. May I ask a uh, uh, staff? You know, because uh, council uh, we have done the uh, those uh, workshop about uh, more than three weeks ago. We have a solar Q and A to identify, distinguish each application. But from last workshop until today, uh, this around the, uh, 24 days, is there any application that uh, have any additional information or have any the, uh, different uh, situation? Can you share with us? Thanks, Jimmy. Thanks, Councillor Chin. So other than the, the change that we're all experiencing with this um, lock, current lockdown, there's no additional specific information from the applicants that's come through in that time period. Great, thank you. Um, Andrew. Thank you. Um, just in terms of conflict, so I know um, there were a number of matters that would have been reported for the workshop. Um, I've got a conflict because I'm on the board of the Keynes Bay Museum. I don't know whether the others are, are carried through from the workshop to this meeting, but just in the interest of um, transparency, I'll note that one. Thanks. Can we just check with um, Sam? Which conflicts have you got recorded through from the workshop? So Sam Kelly. 
I, sorry, um, I don't have them to hand, but I'll, I'll just flip them through via email and then any additions, um, you can just reply to that. Is that okay? Yeah, that'd yeah. be great. Um, and so we'll just make sure that people, because um, people declared those on the day, that they'll be carried through. Um, can I just, so Yanni um, mentioned one before, I mentioned one before, Andrew's mentioned one. Yanni? I've just got them here, Sarah. If, can I just go through them? Yeah, that'd be I great, thanks. Um, so Councillor Coker declared an interest in 37, Canterbury Neighbourhood Support. Uh, Councillor Scandrick declared an interest in uh, number one, Christchurch Op Operatic Incorporated, Showbiz. Councillor Templeton declared an interest in uh, number five, Wollstone Brass. Councillor Cotter declared an interest in item 73, Keep Christchurch Beautiful. And the Deputy Mayor declared an interest in 88, O'Kane's Bay, Māori and Colonial Museum Trust. I don't know if there's any others, but those were the ones that we had recorded. Thank Great, you. thank you. That's really useful. Okay, so we've had this. Sarah, um, move could, could I just um, record a, a non-vote because I'm I haven't I haven't gone through the the complete list for conflict, so I'm just going to conflict myself generally. Is that all right? Sure. Cool. Sarah, Sarah I've just got recorded. one question. If that's okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, hey Sam, it's just on Arana Park. So it's good we've got the recommendation in there, but I'm just wondering, did we proceed any further with, um, I mean, this is obviously a one year solution and they'll be in, in difficult times now as well. H have we engaged with them at a board level or a management level on helping them for a long-term sustainable solution? Because I, I thought we may have got to a point where that would be a, a resolution if you needed direction. Sure, I'd like to bring Josh Wharton, Joshua Wharton in on, to answer this question. Thanks, Councillor McDonald. Yeah, uh, hey, Councillor McDonald. Um, we, well, I sit um, with the board reasonably regularly. Um, they, they're they reasonably convinced that the solution that they need is investment from councils. They're willing to, to accept advice from multiple positions but they're they're relatively convinced at this current stage that what they need is is regional investment from the local TLAs. Yeah, I guess the issue I have with this is what we raised in the workshop was this is a one-off payment. It's not a long-term solution. So I thought, um, and, and look, probably, I've probably got it wrong, but I thought we potentially were going to look at granting them this and then um, having something so that when they come back next year, we've kind of got some comfort that, and I'm sure they are, they're doing you know, everything at their end, but also if we need to feed into a long-term plan or talk to the neighbouring councils, we can. So is that something we can give you direction on here or is it something we do later down the line? I just don't want to get to this point next year again. It's probably not something that would, um, just we decide around this particular decision, but certainly would um, appreciate any insight into that that you might have. Well, yeah, it's not a, it's not an insight. It's a wanting an action from staff so that when we get a funding from them, because we will get a funding application next year. I'll, I see John's. He might have an answer. Thanks, Josh. Uh, <coughs> it's Gary here. Hey, um, I think I think we can take on board um, exactly what you're asking for, Councillor. That we will have discussions with Irana and we'll start them early. Um, to make sure when we get to a position next year, we're either um, have a have a plan that everyone is agreeable to, or we know what the obstructions are, and we will come back to you with that. But we will take that on as stuff. We will yep, increase the relationship. Thanks, Gary. That's great. Yep. Cool. Thanks, Sarah. Thank you, Yanni. Uh, yeah. Thanks. Um, just uh, Gary. Um, and Sam, we did have a, an outcome from the workshop to provide additional advice around Arana Park. I appreciate that. Obviously, with the lockdown and with COVID, things have been, um, you know, condensed in terms of um, work that we need to do. But is that advice um, being worked on, and can that could that advice be circulated to us um, with it with it uh, picking up on Sam's point with some recommendations at some stage in the future? We, we were hoping to have it for this meeting, but I don't think it's been provided. Yeah, look, I think in all honesty, um, it is a massive question. It is a big question and a, a little bit like what you talked about at the start, there's there's other organisations in the same situation. 
Um, so no, uh, in terms of um, we haven't got any further with it, but we're committed to doing that. I think we probably need some direction around um, what those other organisations are as well. They probably sit in the same the same kind of situation. Can, can I just suggest as the chair of that workshop and to the chair of this committee that we flag this as an item we'd like to have a um, as part of one of our Tuesday briefings um, where we can um, get the advice from staff and, and, and consider um, a way forward, a, a more sustainable way forward. So accepting that we're going to make the funding decision for this year, is that something that we could do? Oh, I'm going to ask the, ch the ch um, chair of this committee whether she's happy with that approach. Yeah, I don't get to choose exactly what goes on the Tuesday briefings, um, but I'd be happy getting um, advice back. And if a Tuesday briefing is warranted, then that'd be great. But I think that um, I think that staff will continue to work with Arana Park on um, a sustainable future and, and funding options going forward. Is that right? Sorry, the point is that we, we've asked for that advice to be done for this meeting and we don't have it. I think the best thing to do would be to um, ensure that we get the advice and have a chance to discuss it at a governance level. I, I don't mind Thanks. the forum that takes, but I think yeah, it is important it. I to think recognise it, it, yeah. that there was a request for that advice for this meeting. Um, you know, we don't have it. Let's set up a process to ensure that we can consider it in the near future. Thanks. John had some advice there. Uh, thank you. So we've got a request for advice, as uh, Councillor Johansson said. It's been three weeks since the meeting. The staff concerned have been uh, focused on putting this report together. Uh, we will uh, uh, get that advice and we will come back to this committee, probably in a, uh, a publicly excluded discussion, uh, workshop format and seek further direction. We'll focus on Arana Park first. And as Gary said, if there are any other organisations in the same boat, we'll have a discussion with the committee on those as well. That's great. Thank you very much. Um, any further questions on the report? No? OK. In that case, we have a mover and a seconder. Um, and we'll move into debate. Any debate? Yanni? Or is that your hand up for that or not? You're muted, though. No, you're still muted. You're still muted, Yanni. Yeah, Thanks. OK, cool. Oh, I keep getting muted by the host. Am I, can you hear me now? Cool. Yeah. OK. Um, oh, just, just to quickly say, um, so just just to acknowledge the, the community organisations we have in our city, and I just wanted to um, particularly just highlight, you know, a number who are working with the people that are really impacted with the lockdown. So just to acknowledge all the good work that we have happening in our city from so many groups, and so obviously council supporting a number of those through this process is really critical to our city's wellbeing. So I just wanted to um, acknowledge, I mean, I've acknowledged the staff in the introduction um, and I just in conclusion wanted to acknowledge the work that a lot of these community groups are doing to look after the wellbeing and welfare of our citizens. Thank you. Thanks, Yanni. Anne. Uh, yeah, kia ora. Um, I'd like to make an, uh, move an amendment to uh, the recommendations, please. Um, that the Sustainability and Community Resilience Committee makes a grant of 56K, the requested amount, from the 21-22 Strengthening Communities Fund to the Christchurch Youth Council um, towards uh, wages and training costs. Thank you. Do you have a seconder for that one? Happy to second. Thanks, Jake. Okay, I'm just moving down to... The thing. I'm just going to step out. Um, okay. Sorry, what number was that, Anne? Uh, oh, sorry. You've, I can't. Sorry, I don't know what number it is. Sorry. Sorry, yeah, because we were asked if you had a mean months to. I'll be oh, able to I may have put it in the too. email. Sorry, I haven't got it in front of me. Okay. I think it made Sam's, 20. Do you know? It's like 21. 18. 18. Thanks, Joe. 18. It is two. 18. Okay, Thank so the you. current um, the current amount is 35. You've asked for that to move to um, 56. Yes. Okay, and so that will be a difference of 21,000, and that will come off five off the um, strengthening communities and 16 off the discretionary response fund. Correct. Okay, and you know, move into debate, and um, we might just do one debate and then move the amendment first and then the substantive. So we'll just continue with one debate rather than a separate debate on the amendment. Thanks. You move into your debate now. 
Okay, thank you. Um, so from what we've seen this morning already, um, the community grants outcomes is, the, the point of it is to increase community engagement and local decision making is one of the key outcomes. Um, the Christchurch City Council is, sorry, the Christchurch Youth Council is in a very unique position that it offers training and mentoring into civic uh, decision-making, civic activity. Um, just recently, they had uh, an evening where those that were interested in becoming part of the Christchurch Youth Council um, was held, and they had 28 young people who were interested in becoming involved in, uh, in the Christchurch Youth Council. The coordinator acts as a, as a mentor and a tutor to train young people into these processes. So really this is a nurturing ground for our future leaders. And we have got great examples of, of this in action. Uh, many of you will know Mia Sutherland who is, was actually on the front page of the paper the other day wearing a mask alongside um, Leanne and others. Um, she's been incredibly involved in the um, school's strike for climate amongst other things. She was mentored and, and trained through the Christchurch Youth Council and now sits as a representative on Te Paipakari, the uh, Youth Standing Committee, an example of the great work that's being done here. Um, so in terms of what we want to achieve, also through our O Tātahi um, Christchurch uh, uh, community strategy to, to develop uh, leadership in groups that don't normally uh, aren't um, strongly represented. This is an example of of of, a, of what we can do here. So um, the coordinator is paid uh, not as well as she should be, um, and I believe we employ her as a city council, and we have a responsibility to um, to com compensate her correctly um, for the valuable work that she does. So uh, very. Yeah, very hopefully you'll consider this um, as you make your decisions. Thanks, Anne. Uh, Jimmy. Uh, thank you, yes. Uh, firstly, I would like to tell this opportunity to acknowledge the staff, the efforts and contribution, uh, contributions uh, to prepare this uh, comprehensive report. I just want to remind all our fellow councillors you know, it has been taken for four hours for reviewing and discussing each application of all the applications during the workshop uh, uh, more than uh, three weeks ago. During the workshop, you know, uh, through the Q and the A, each council had highlighted all those concerning the applications and the, the style in response, interpretation, and then also expectation. And also we have, you know, informal, you know, the, the vote about the, the, all those the, the concerning the items. My personal view, it is the fair process, very fair process. Unless there's any additional information different from the workshop you know, on specific uh, uh, application. Otherwise I stick to support the, the workshop recommendation and also the just earlier, Know, the staff replied to the uh, my questions uh, from previous uh, workshop until now. There is no any additional information and any of the circumstances have been any change. Thank you. Thanks, Jimmy. Tim. Uh, thank you. Look, I um, seconded and I will support the substantive. As I said, um, we are in our second lockdown. There are a lot of organisations that don't know the extent of damage or hurt they will be facing in um, the sh short term coming towards them. Um, I think it is, um, I just don't think it's appropriate for us or councillors to have a second crack at the cherry after spending so much time looking at this with staff. So I'm really disappointed at this. And I think to look at the um, Christchurch Youth Council with such a large increase or proposed large increase, I just don't think it's appropriate. So I think the um, level of remuneration for the, the coordinator is respect, respectful at the moment. 
but there are a lot of groups, as I said, that are facing some really hard times. They don't know what the fallout is at the moment because they're in the middle of it. So I think it's um, priority to support the discretionary response fund, which will be, as I um, asked the question of staff, which will be um, um, approached by many organisations. We're not out of this yet, but there could well be another lockdown in the future. And I think we've got to be very respectful and responsible and just hold our breath and see where we're going to go. So I will not be supporting the uh, ANS movement. Thank you. Thanks so much. Um, Pauline. Unmuted. Oh, look, I'm in a similar vein to um, Tim here because I feel that we have done a lot of work on this. Um, look, I, every single organisation in here is worth more money than what we're able to give them. And I think that's a given. We've all got our you know, pet ones that we want to push forward. I do respect the Youth Council work and I really value the work that Anne Galloway is doing, particularly with the youth. And I appreciate how you do want to, to raise that. And I do feel that a, a jump of 21,000 on a recommendation of the 35 is just too big a jump. I would have supported a smaller one, but I think that that's just massive. So um, I reluctantly won't support that today. And um, there may be a way that if they, they, they come up with a new um, project or a sub project, or they need an extra uh, boost somehow, they may be able to come back to the discretionary um, response fund because that will be um, holding the money, the balance of this money. So, um, yeah, unfortunately, at that level of another 21,000, I really can't support that today. Um, but I also want to thank the staff for the incredible amount of work. This is such a difficult piece of work, this, and the workshop we had was very valuable too. We, we learned a lot about these organisations and the benefit they, they bring to our city. So um, I'll be supporting the substantive today. Thanks so much. Um, Mike. Uh, thank you. Look, I'm going to foreshadow a motion in case Anne's amendment loses, um, and that's actually to increase that um, the the youth council by five thousand. Um, look, I don't like doing this type of process in a meeting. I think actually the workshop was really actually good, and we got to a good point. Um, but look, Anne makes some good comments, but I don't think the appropriate way is to come to a meeting and raise it by so so much. We've got five thousand left in the um, in this pot, um, which I I think is actually it's a good opportunity to actually pass that on to the youth council, who actually do some really good work and would actually benefit and be able to use this this extra money wise wisely. Um, but I can't increase uh, can't agree to such a large increase at this large minute uh, everything else i'm also very happy with but um if if Anne's um amendment fails which i won't be voting for um i'd like to foreshadow a five thousand increase thanks so much mike um any further debate on that no in that case i will put Anne's amendment first which is to um uh raise the canterbury uh, the christ youth council funding by twenty one thousand to 56. Oh. sorry Someone else there? No? Um, okay, and that's moved oh. by Anne and seconded Sorry, by... Sarah? Yep. Are you the... Yeah, sorry. I would like to just speak to it quickly before you put it because I've tried to get... Um, having difficulties here with the technology. So Anne, um, can I just... Anne, just... Anne hang on. Um, you've... The, the mover of an amendment doesn't get a right of reply. Oh, right, okay. The mover of the, um, the substantive does. Okay, so thank you. Yeah, sorry. Right, sorry. Uh, Yanni. Yanni, would you like to wrap up? Uh, no, I think I've, I felt like I've already wrapped up. Just, okay. just to say that, um, I mean, I'll, I'll just make a brief comment, which is we need to review the MOU we have with the Youth Council. I support the Youth Council. We have a youth action plan. One of the outcomes of the LTP was to get a report back, which we'll be discussing tomorrow, on how we review the youth action plan. So. I'm very sympathetic to funding the Youth Council to the appropriate level. It is just really hard to receive an amendment on the day of the meeting um, when we've had a workshop in fairness to the other, to my council colleagues. So, um, you know, I think we've got other processes where we should consider the level of funding for the Youth Council. And um, I just don't think that putting, um, raising this funding now, uh, I think the key thing is if we can get something back that we have the opportunity to consider 
additional funding. And I think staff, I think staff are of the opinion that um, if we get new information, we can do that. Thanks for that. Um, right, so we'll move Anne's amendment first. So um, anyone in, uh, those in favour of increasing it to the requested amount of 56,000 from 35, um, please put your, the IHE thumbs up, but the screen split so it's hard to see everyone. So actually we might have, um, the Would you like it to scrolling be through. Yeah, that's probably going to be easiest for this. Okay, so on the amendment, Councillor Turner? No. Councillor Chen? No. Councillor Chu? No. Councillor Coker? Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me, yes. Councillor Cotter? No. Councillor Davidson? No. Councillor Galloway? Yes. Councillor Goff? I think he's left. Okay. Councillor Johansson? I'll abstain. Councillor Kewen? No. Councillor MacDonald? No. Councillor McClellan? Uh, yes. Councillor Scandrett? No. Councillor Templeton? No. The Mayor? I'm not voting. I'm stepping ben. back from the decision. I've already said that. Yeah, okay. abstaining from the entire, yeah. Yep. Um, so that's three votes for, nine votes against, and two abstentions. Right, so that's not carried. Um, but we do have a foreshadowed amendment, which is to use the uh, remaining $5,000 in the Strength and Communities Fund and raise the Christchurch Youth Council from 35000 to 40000 um, by Councillor Davidson. Uh, Councillor Galloway, would you like to second that? Indeed, I would. Thank you. Right. Um, I don't think we need a new debate, um, but, Joe, I think we're going to have to um, move fine. that. That's fine. So um, this is for the foreshadowed motion of an increase of 5,000 on the grant. Councillor Kewen? No. Councillor McClellan? Ah, uh, yes. Councillor MacDonald? No. Councillor Davidson? Yes. Councillor Galloway? So yes. Councillor Scandrett? No. Councillor Chu? No. Councillor Coker? Yes. Councillor Cotter? You're muted still, Pauline. Councillor Cotter? We'll come back okay, to her. I'm just scrolling through and I can't see her on the screen. So maybe she's dropped off. Okay, Councillor Chen? No. I've noticed an abstention from the Mayor. Councillor Templeton? Yes. Deputy Mayor Turner? Yes. Councillor Johansson, abstention? No, I'm, I'm fine with this one. It's fine. Okay. Councillor Goff, no longer here. Okay, Councillor Cotter? No longer here. No. That's seven votes for, five votes against and one abstention. Okay, so that's carried. Okay, so we'll now move to the substantive. Um, Thanks everyone. Okay, so we'll move through to the substantive, which now um, includes that. Um, I'll just move that to my... Um, I'll be withdrawing my seconding of it because um, I just think it's yeah, wrong to something approach it. That you... 
Okay, that's fine. Do we have a new seconder for the substantive? Yes, and Melanie. On Melanie. Okay. Or if you can see someone else, go for that. No, no, that's fine. Okay, so that's Melanie. Okay, and people have their already have their votes recorded against um, that particular um, funding. Um, so that's fine in that in that one there. Uh, so that becomes the substantive. Um, it, what I might do though, because that one has already passed as a as an allocation of funding. What mm -hmm. I will do is I will make it the resolution is everything else. Um, so all of the other funding um, recommendations from that workshop. And that way people don't feel the need to vote against everything just for the sake of that one piece of funding. Is that clear for everyone? Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. Okay. In that case, I will um, put the remainder of the funding allocations and resolutions. Um, all those in favour, please put your thumbs up. Okay, aye. and anyone, yep, so Anne is an I and Aaron. Aye. That's great. Is there anyone against? No, in that case, I declare that carried. Thank you very much.